Update 7's Blueprint Designer allows us to scale our factories much quicker by building modular parts, and in this tips and tricks guide, I'll be giving you a selection of tips to help you produce amazing blueprints, whether that's for yourself or for others. But if you're new to the Blueprint system, make sure to check out my basics guide first, which covers using the Blueprint Designer and how to download and share other blueprints, as well as getting your hands on some of my own blueprints. I will put a link in the top right hand corner now. This video is also sponsored by Crossout, but there'll be more on that later. And make sure to stay to the end to check out my newest blueprint that I'll be making available to you all. So my first tip is if you're building multiple designs which are going to snap together, then make sure to place a second blueprint designer next to your first one. Now the reason for this is you'll have uh, a much easier time eyeballing the connections, whether they're going to be in line and working together. Doing this is also great for giving you an awareness of whether your walkways are going to be in line or perhaps your power lines as well. As you can see, these two are not if we were to stick them together, but the inputs are. As you can see here, I've loaded in the cable factory. Unfortunately, these inputs are not in line. What you can do is clear the designer, make sure you grab your resources, and then from here, we're going to place that particular blueprint back in here but this time ourselves, and we're going to be able to choose the direction, such as there. This is also a great way to scale up your build by blueprinting horizontally, as you can see here. We can make sure that everything is in line. That's actually the wrong way around. And then we just need to print that on, and we can save this as a blueprint, and you can see we've scaled this up. And as you can see, this is a great way to scale up blueprints quickly, uh, as well as your factory. When building, it can be pretty difficult to get the position of various things. Um, like even here, trying to place this down, can't quite see where everything is. Um, so I highly recommend using the hover pack. And if you do, um, why not power these power poles and place them in the corners? It should cover uh, the majority, if not all, of the build or using these towers. I found them incredibly useful for this particular use when trying to get the positioning. The next tip I have is to pay attention to the floor markings. They can be incredibly useful. Uh, what we're going to do here is look at the markings. So you see here we have this section. If we mark it, we can see that we've got four spaces, one, two, three, four, until the next fluid input. So we'll place that there. And the same goes for the um, the solid input as well. So if we place this here, we can now do one, two, three, four, and then we have to place this one. Knowing that we are now going to build our uh, manifold and we're going to start the manifold for the solid inputs here and we're going to end just on this edge here and then for the liquids we're going to end on this section here once that's done we're going to delete these and save this and thanks to these markings we should have hopefully when we place this be able to um, make it so that these all run perfectly and we can add and scale up our refineries accordingly. And they will snap to the inputs because we know the input um, space. And then we could also do the same on this side potentially as well. And knowing that that's the, the space between we can quite easily scale, I've done that wrong. We can quite easily scale this up and then we just need to do the connections. <laughs> this is actually the next tip. Um, so the other one is to pay attention to when you're building these blueprints because, uh, well, there's a new placement for like a snapping point for foundations and they can clip 
or snap to any section on here. So it's quite easy to accidentally go over maybe a, another foundation, not be aware of that. Um, so just be aware of any potential mistakes that you make. It's much easier to adapt them in here than to spam 10 of these down and then find that one of the um, splitters or mergers is slightly out. So pay attention, double check your blueprints because otherwise you may have quite a lot of deleting on your hands. So my next tip is in relation to my three refinery um, setup. We have the ground logistics floor and I noticed it's really difficult to see where the inputs and outputs are. And so what I would mention for any build that requires multiple pieces uh, is to, when you're, you're building these, make sure that you have a way of knowing uh, where the inputs are and the outputs are. When starting off with a blueprint, you should consider it quite carefully. Firstly, whether you want it to be a free build, such as the manifold that we just built, um, or whether you want it to be a part of a, module fact a modular factory. If you want it to be part of a modular factory, I highly recommend standardizing your builds. So for example, um, with these, we have a two meter foundation on the base and then we have a one meter foundation for the actual production level. So when we're building this uh, blueprint, we're going to make sure that the base is going to two meters deep and then the next level, one meter and just below the top, like so. And that way, when you do snap these, they should fit perfectly together. The other thing that you want to think about doing is if you are doing a standardized build to make sure that you save the base. So standard um, logistics floor, for example. And that way, every time you start a new build, you can start with this and work from it, uh, rather than having to rebuild all of the basic um, elements. It's just a way of speeding it up. And then, as mentioned in the previous one, if we grab our new blueprint, when we press blueprint uh, build mode, you can see these are at the same level, which is going to be great for scaling up our factory quite quickly. Next, we're going to cover how to save your blueprints without corrupting them, as well as some other tips to know about that. But before we do, make sure to check out Crossout's new supercharged update. The online vehicle shooter has received a graphics overhaul and is more immersive than ever. Assemble war machines from hundreds of different parts. Attach lasers, cannons, and armor to your vehicle before jumping in head to head against other players. And you can be worry free as you'll only be placed against others with similarly powerful vehicles due to their parts based matchmaking. The game has also received a huge amount of quality of life changes from an updated interface to improved vehicle controls. And obviously, for me, I love the easy to use vehicle designer where I can let my creativity truly excel. Once you've finished crafting your vehicle, you can then test drive them in the Mad Max inspired post-apocalyptic setting before jumping into multiplayer. So what are you waiting for? Play now on PC, PlayStation or Xbox using my link below and you'll get a free bonus pack including special parts and unique paint. So about saving your game, when it comes to saving, the most important thing to remember is not to use special characters like the slash. So don't try and do short code for like with or without. That's the important thing when it comes to the title. I'd also recommend setting a directory. We'll talk about this, but you can see here with us being able to really easily produce blueprints, it's going to be very easy for us to build a lot of blueprints and then get a bit overwhelmed with like picking what is what. A lot of these are tests, so they're all, they've are they all got the same kind of system. Um, but I do recommend creating some categories or subcategories. Um, so for example, we have my storage, which is going to produce, uh, have the storage modules in it, as well as the conveyor buses. We have the manufacturing, which has um, basic uh, 
setups that we've got. Also, be aware of the logos that you can produce. It's great being able to see the um, the title here, but when it comes to your hotbar, which you can place them in, you're only going to be able to see what uh, the icon is. So if we go to undefined, it's going to be very difficult to work out what these are without trial and error and, and getting them out. So do be aware of the logos that you're using. You could also do this with the color. So for example, you could do um, blue as the, the ground floor, then green as the um, the manufacturing floor and then orange or red um, for the ceiling and rooftop. Of course, I did take that little color coordination from Valheim. It's a great way to associate levels, um, something you may want to bear in mind. My next tip is going to be based on setting up a um, a factory, essentially, uh, how you can fix your blueprints to the global grid. And this starts off by placing a single foundation um, on the global grid. And from here, we're going to create our own blueprints. I've already done these here. We have two, three, four. We have four. This one is a single foundation. We have a um, multiple one, a larger one, and obviously uh, an even bigger one. And what you want to do is to align this with the one that was snapped to the global grid. And then from here, you're able to um, snap the build to these. There is one caveat though. So you see this, we've used a single foundation here. Um, if we have a single foundation, then the blueprint that we have is going to want to snap to the center. And that is why we're, we're now at a point where we have, we're, we're off by half a foundation. So you can either do a single foundation or you can do a two by two foundation. And then for example, here we have the four by four grid and you'll notice that these are now in line. So it really depends on what um, build you're going for, what your what size your blueprints are. If you've got a three by three grid, um, you can see this is now going to the half point again, and you can change this. You can change these to the default mode uh, where you have to manually place them and it's a little bit more difficult to get it in line. Uh, but that is something to bear in mind. You'll see me often either doing a single foundation or a four by four. I just find it easier to get it, but uh, a one by one or a two by two works just as well, depending on the uh, situation that your build is going to be in. Uh, what I'm going to say is do not try to snap the ends together. The reason for this is that they don't work as you can see there. So whenever you're building these, sure you can use the whole extent of the build, but make sure that you place them so there's a bit of a space apart. So for example, from here, rather than connecting this right uh, into it, we're going to make sure that it's going the right way. And then we're going to make sure that there's a bit of a space between the two uh, connections. So just be aware of that. And of course, the final one is just a gentle reminder that it is much easier to place these from above rather than down on the ground. It just gives you much more um, space to like play around with. And so you can see we built that with quite a bit of ease, but here, because we can't see the ends, it makes it quite difficult. You have to find the right position and then place it, which isn't helpful <laughs> all the time. Ah! Point proven, try to build from above where possible. Um, but that's all we have time for in this video. If you found these tips helpful, do hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more. Also, before we finish, I just wanted to let you know that we are going to be uploading this rail support uh, up to the blueprint. So if you do want to have one of these yourself, ooh, 
you'll be able to find this on the satisfactory calculator. I am pretty happy with it, so do check it out if you'd like. Uh, also, if you're not sure how to actually take it from the website and then install it into your save, then do check out that video. And uh, we've got plenty more com uh, coming in the upcoming weeks. Uh, special thanks does go, of course, to Crossout for sponsoring this video. Why not join the chaos wastes of the Mad Max universe? And make sure to use the link in the description below and get your free bonus pack. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solo Eclipse patrons, James Irwin and Fireflesh, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity, Ben and Star, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Chick Norris. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.